Hello and welcome to Old Brother, a podcast about Salford slash Manchester's legendary and much missed musical institution, The Fall. Each week we invite along a guest to chat about their experiences and memories of the group. If you're wondering, we consist of me, Paul Hanley, and my brother Steve, who, as you probably know, was a member of The Fall for 20 years. You can find us at all the usual suspects, but we're hosted at play.acast.com forward slash s forward slash Old Brother. In this first episode of Series 2, we're delighted to be speaking to the legendary artist, comedian, actor and quiz show host, Mr Jim Moyer, better known to the world as Vic Reeves, about what the fall meant to him. You'll enjoy this, it's a cracker. Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the Old Brother podcast, a fall podcast, as Steve likes to say, not the fall podcast, and we're um, delighted uh, and yes. much, much honoured with our guest today, who is the celebrated artist and uh, bon viveur, uh, Mr Jim Moyer. <laughs> Possib- bon viveur, yeah. <laughs> Possibly better known by his nom de voyage of Vic Reeves. Yes, that's right, yeah. And here Hello, I am. Jim. Morning. Good morning, lads. <laughs> morning, well, <laughs> gentlemen, old fellas. Old fellas, yes, old chaps. Fellas. Ooh, yeah. I think I, I think oh, we should wow. bring the word chap back. I think that's a that's a nice term for a gentleman of a certain age. Chaps. He was a lovely yeah. chap. Hello, chaps. <laughs> I know it sounds a bit too posh for me. <laughs> so you well, Jim? Yeah, I'm very good. It's a nice, brisk, cold day. Uh, blue skies, and that's the kind of way I like it. Yeah. So are we keeping you from your painting this morning then? Because you like to start about seven, don't you? I, did, I yeah, start six or seven in the morning. But no, today is a day off. Uh, I'm going to go to the capital with my wife to do some shopping. Lovely. With the Christmas, <laughs> early Christmas shopping? Well, that's what she calls it. I call it, you know, nosing around the shops and, you know, yeah, I suppose it is Christmas. It's a, I don't know. I don't know if I really like a point in Christmas until it's December. No, yeah. quite so. Dead right. Although it seems to start. It seems to start. Right. When, when did you start with the? Uh, it, when did it start selling Christmas trees this year? Seems to oh, get well, earlier every year. Early, early, so like we don't want the entire year to be Christmas, do we? No. But at the moment, it's like you get two months of Christmas. And that's, uh, you know, it's too much of your life. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying this to my daughter the other day on the way to school. I said, you spend like a third of your day asleep. That's a third of your life, isn't it? So if you get to 90, you've been asleep for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> and if you then reduce that down to the amount of time that you're celebrating Christmas, it's not much you left. <laughs> 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 there was an interview with Michael Bublé on the radio yesterday and she said about his Christmas album and he said yeah I always thought that was the best holiday to write an album about so your, your, your album of Easter hits isn't coming out so quick then is it yeah well I think you know let's start I'm not religious in any way but let's do Lent <laughs> Michael Bublé presents his Lent <laughs> album yeah <laughs> no meat on Wednesday what a hit that was yeah that's a good one let's do yeah let's what we'll call it let's do Lent it's on Friday <laughs> Vic Reeves presents let's do Rent Rent oh that, that was a Freudian slip keep the Rent up. yeah Lent all day <laughs> Right, so the first thing I was going to ask you about your your uh, art show that was on in um, started in Manchester a couple of weeks ago. Steve was lucky enough to get there. I had yes. to work. Someone's got to keep the wheels of industry going, I suppose. But um, why did you pick Manchester? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was going to ask you why did you pick Manchester for? Because I like oh, really like Manchester. I you know it's I just I, I love Manchester. I like the I like the whole viewpoint. Of Manchester, yeah. I like the people. I like the look of it. I like the feel of it. It's got a great feel, Manchester. So um, that's why I did it. I got offered it, and then I went, "Yeah, you yeah. know, much more than that." And I like going for a night out in Manchester. It's like you know when you do gig. I went and did a gig last night for the first time in in years and years. The first time I did a singing gig in about. I don't know, 20 odd years. I went oh, nice. with um, Jules Holland and I was with his big band and I was in um, Southampton and um, a three and a half thousand seater. And it just reminded me 
In fact, what was I saying? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, what I was going to say was the best o- audiences are in Manchester. I always used to look forward to going to Manchester when we were on tour of doing anything. Yeah, they're, right. out there, they're out for a good night out. It's like they've paid the money and they're going to enjoy themselves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're preaching to the choir here. I'm, I'm quite appreciative <laughs> of coming from Manchester. I must admit, I always say that I'm always I'm always glad my mum uh, and dad got the train to Manchester yeah. when they got off in Liverpool. You know, they didn't stop where they were. Because you're, you're, you, you lot are off of Ireland, aren't you? We are. Yeah. 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 I was watching Back to the Future yesterday. <laughs> I, and uh, he said... I read the books. I know about all about you. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds vaguely menacing, yeah. that. Yes. No, it that sounds worrying. <laughs> <laughs> I know about your Irish background, your pie shops and everything. Yeah, blimey. Yeah, but you yeah, should. That's, you that's, that's going to be the next book. Out. <laughs> <laughs> that's the next book all about the pie shop. You should do. That's <laughs> a great thing. I think pies are a much maligned um, dish. Oh, you can't be a pie. They're in Australia. Massively yes. popular in Australia. Yes. Uh, they, put, they put mash on the top, don't they, in Australia? And peas, yeah. Yeah. On the top, yeah. Well, I'd put it underneath. Yes. <laughs> peas on the bottom. Meat yeah. in the middle, mash on the top. A good, a good way of making a fish pie, which is a kind of different thing. But if you get mushy peas and put that on the bottom, and then put all the fish on the top, that's it. And then you mash on top oh, of yeah. that. Yeah, that's a good way of doing a fish. No sauce, pie. no white sauce, no bechamel, if you will. Well, you can do, but put right at the bottom <laughs> of mushy peas. Right. right. At the- Right. You know, if you, okay. Yeah. Any particular brand of mushy peas your favourite? <laughs> Campbell's. Um, it's not. This is pretty good. I'm t- I'm, I can see the label. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what the is. Is it? No? Bachelors. That's the one. Bachelors. That's it. Yes, mm. bachelors. <laughs> well, I suppose we better talk about the fall at some point, haven't we? I suppose at some point. Yeah. yeah. I so, so. <laughs> well, the question we always ask is, what was the first, what was your first encounter with the fall then? Like everyone else on John Peel. And I um, moved to London from Darlington in 1979 with me mate Jack. We used to share a bedroom uh, in Brixton. So he'd have a bed at one side and I'd have a, a bed at the other side. And in the middle was a radio and John Peel was on. Night, so we, we used to go to bed, put John Peel on, and drop off. To the, to the, <laughs> the, <laughs> to the sound of some <laughs> Bolivian nose flute. To, to, to the youngest set, that probably sounds a bit wartime, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> With the cat's whiskers radio. <laughs> yeah, it probably, you know, it was just an old-fashioned radio that was in between us. So, well, we'll go to bed, put John Peel on, and drop off. And... It, and uh, and he would play the mighty fall, as he used yes. to say. I mean, yeah. that's the, it's become a bit of a cliche, that thing about listening to John Peel under the bed covers. But it, it, everybody did it, didn't they? Well, I we think. were the bed covers. I, I, was, uh, I was 20 at the time, so you know, I was... <laughs> it was allowed. <laughs> it, was, it was above the, the bed covers. <laughs> what, 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 what year is this, then? 1979. Okay, right at the beginning then. Okay. So that was when that was when you were at art school, was it? Uh, no, I left Darlington and went to Brixton. Right. And uh, I went to work in a factory. And I had to get up about six o'clock in the morning. So I think, you know, it was, I, Peel started about 10. So I think I was probably going to bed about 10 and, and dropping off at half 10. So if you got in the first half hour... <laughs> so what kind of what was the first so that'll have been what dragnet kind of time will it i bet it would have been yeah um and then i was then i became a really like massive fall fan um almost instantly so. Surely you waited till March 1980 when they sorted the drummer situation out. Surely, <laughs> yeah, I'd have to. Yeah, when you, I thought I'll just, I've got a prediction of the future. I'm just going to put this on hold. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you first see him live then? Um, about right, right about then. I think uh, you, the fall, were on in Norwich in. 79 and uh, the support group 
was the Higsons, which was Charlie Higson. It was on at the it was at the Norwich University. University, University yeah. 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 It was one of my first gigs up. Was it? Well Charlie Higson was um I was staying at Charlie Higson's house because he was a friend of a friend of mine from Darlington and uh, that's how I met Charlie Higson and the and Paul Whitehouse and Harry Enfield. They were all at Norwich University. And right. Uh, Charlie was having a party at his house and you all came and didn't hang around long. And <laughs> after a long drive back from Norwich. It was quite cold and you all turned up in Parkers and right. we were all a bit snotty. They were going, oh, look at them northern lads in the park. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, look at you, southern lads. <laughs> In your polo next. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not remember that, Steve? Do you not remember the night? No. I, I, re- well, I remember the gig, but I don't remember the party. No, you, you came to a party, but didn't hang around long. No. I don't blame you because people were quite rude. These, these, there were some toffs there, and they were a bit haughty. Huh? Yeah. Anyway, right. um, hey, well, let's tell you what you could have. What you what? I was going to say you could change the face of contemporary culture with a you know, if you you know blown up the house yeah. that night. Everybody was there, weren't they? Blimey! Yeah, so, yes, you were. Everyone was there, and do you know what? About a, well, I'm going to say a week later. It probably wasn't. It was probably a couple of months later. But I went to another party there, and that was in Charlie Higson's house. And he said, um, "We've got um, they're going to knock the house down." He lived in a flat above a television shop. And you had to go through the television shop to get into this flat. And he said, they're going to knock it all down next week. So we're having a destruction party. And like you were given axes and things. And you uh, <laughs> smashed the house up. And I do remember I was having a Tom Tit on the toilet. I <laughs> put an axe through the door. <laughs> See, we'd have stayed if we'd have been at that part. Yeah. <laughs> the whole house got wrecked. They smashed it to pieces and uh, we kept there on the night. Na- and then on the morning, there was a bloke, he knocked on the door and he said, there's been a reprieve. We'd all smashed it to pieces. So I, I legged it. I went, right, well, that, that's that's my cue to clear off and go home. <laughs> How long would it be after that then? <laughs> well, I, I didn't hang around to find out what happened. I like <laughs> so, did you go and see the fall regularly then from then on? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, there's so many times that I can't remember. And I literally <laughs> can't remember. You know, like um, in those early days, like, you know, um, you know, grotesque. When was yeah. that? 1981. I think it was 80. Was it 80? Oh, I was, what, was it around then, anyway. Around then, yeah. There was a lot of gigging then. And I think that was my, um, you know, the fall at the peak for yeah. me. That oh, was, yeah. that was my shit. Doing the right thing there, Paul. <laughs> 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 you went right downhill, didn't they? Around about eighty-five, I always think. <laughs> I, well, you know, I think I always think of the fall in various, you know, almost like different groups. Mm. Yeah, you know, Definitely. there's that period, and then there's that period, and I really like the pre-eighty period and the the eighty to like eighty. I'd say 82 period was one. It was like different groups. Yeah. Am I right in saying have other people said that? Yeah. There's there's a massive change in sound, isn't it? I think. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I always um, say when they they bought a guitar tuner, there was a big change in sound. (laughs) How to tune the guitar? They could tune that, definitely. That Dragnet is completely out of tune, (laughs) which is part of its charm, I suppose. I, I like things like that, though. I, you know, I mean, I, I like th- things. You know, you can you can hear people singing in tune and playing in tune all day long. You know, but yeah. I'm looking for a bit of abstract impressionism. Yes, well, indeed, that's the other thing about Mark. He didn't like playing in time either, in tune or in time. Well, I like that. That's a great <laughs> thing to do. Yeah, it's uh, all- it's a bonus for me if you can get something that doesn't doesn't sound like anything else. Yeah. 
So you got to know Mark quite well, I think, didn't you? Later, was that later on? Or well, we bumped into each other, you know, um, here and there over years. Because I think Paul, I asked you to do um, Dizzy. That wasn't me. I was going to get onto this story. This was this was this is after my time. This was Steve and Craig you asked, and they turned you down, didn't they? Steve, well, I didn't. <laughs> no, Steve. It was Steve. I, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it may have been. It was probably Mark first, and then Steve. Um, I said, "Would you play the, the music for?" Because I'm going to do. Um, I'd done Born Free, and that had been up in the top of the charts. Yeah, it was a number three, and then. Wow. Uh, I said, uh, I'm doing Dizzy. Do you want to do the music? And there was a, he got turned down. <laughs> well, Steve, over to you at this point. Why did you turn it down then? I spoke to Craig about it and Craig wouldn't do it. Not interested. Maybe well, we'll with, with, the, with the words, the quote the, was, I don't like doing cover versions. Oh, I. Yeah. From, the, from someone in a band who <laughs> 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 did Victoria, Ghost in My House, and what what's the music? <laughs> it's what me, uh, me, me, what my grandfather would say. He'd be an obstreperous. Yes. yes. Well, yeah. He's uh, a quick and, and, Craig when he wanted to be. It's, it's funny because Mark was dead against us working with other people, but he was quite up for that. Was he? Yeah, yeah, he was. He would have, you know, he wouldn't have minded. Because <laughs> I said to, I think I said to Mark, do you, why, "Why don't you do it with me? You know, we'll do it as a, a duo." But uh, it got turned. Where was that? Now that might have been it. So that was in nineteen ninety one, and I think it was at maybe Reading Festival or something. Was it Phoenix Festival or Reading? Yeah, was it one of them. Yeah. So I, I don't go to festivals anymore, but. Um, in those days, first festival I went to. Do you know what the first festival I really went to was Reading in 1976? And on the afternoon, there was ACDC, and it was their first um, appearance in Britain. Wow! Yeah. On, a, on a Saturday afternoon, Bon Scott. Yeah, and I was going, look at that little kid with his avocado. <laughs> 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 like, that's what people came to say. They were going, hey, look, there's a little kid playing. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel a bit sorry for him. He's still got to get them bleeding velvet shorts on every time they do a gig, aren't he? What is he now? He's about 70 now. I think he's got to be, yeah. Poor. That's so, be worse. Could be worse. Could be Kiss, I suppose. Does he still have his Aversack on? I didn't know he ever wore a a sack. You're not getting him mixed up with uh, Jimmy Clitheroe, are you? (laughs) (laughs) He used to to come on with a little have sack on. Look at his lunch in. A little bit. (laughs) Come on, on, a little bike. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure you're getting two acts mixed up here. No, he did. (laughs) He did come on a bike, but he did have have a sack on. I don't know if he still does. No, what was in that? Young, yeah, he'd come on. He'd come on a little bike, take his sandwiches out. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what, they lost the the hell. <laughs> they lost a lot when they went mainstream. ACDC. That was a proper act. That was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> the fall. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. The, so there's my major link. With the fall, we could have been at number one. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> could have been, I know. You could have got on top of the pop, Steve. Oh, no. You, really? could have, you, could forgive, you could forgive the Inspiral Carpets after all these years. Yeah. I'm not yeah. going to. No, so I've never got over that. <laughs> the best thing, that the, the, the actually, it's a bonus, is that I knocked off um, Robin Hood off top of the pops. Off Did he? Yeah. yeah. Ryan Adams. Ryan Adams. Yeah, he was wow. number one for like fourteen weeks. Think, yeah, and then uh, yeah, I he was knocked. Him he was number- oh, that's so you knocked him off. Fantastic. Yeah, well, actually, it was you too. But they released the fly, which lasted for one day. You had to buy, it, and they did it to make him leave the the, the top of the right. But it was actually yeah. me who did it. Really, of course, definitely. Yeah. That's a good claim to fame, that isn't it? Knocking uh, that's Robin up there with Joe Dolce, that. Keeping yeah, Vienna off number one. Yeah. Shut up your face. How long was that number one? Shut up your face. I don't know. It was more than one week, though, wasn't it? I think. <laughs> so how, yeah. how long were you number one then with Dizzy? Just to rub Steve's nose in it a bit more. Come on. Two weeks. 
two, two weeks, weeks number one. one. Yeah. <laughs> And it was um, a good fun being on top of the pops. I did top of the. Have you done top, the fall do top of the pops? No, no. Oh, you'll have it. You'll be back in therapy next week, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> never. No, no. We got close to it a couple of times, but it never happened. Yeah. What well, you close. needed there was the right hit, Steve. Well, that's right. <laughs> well, Victoria must have been a ghost in my house. Well, that was that was the one I think was ghost in my house. We got to number thirty. And they said if it goes up this week, next week, you can go on top of the pops. That would then it's... A to say, how would Mark have dealt with top of the pops? Well, he did. Paul like, says like... he did it within spiral carpets. Did he? Yeah, he guessed it on what their single "I Want You." But uh... so he was on top of the pops. He was. Yeah, I was waiting in the car park with the engine running, driving <laughs> <laughs> <Five> home <laughs> with a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> You <laughs> were saying though, if, if you had done it, you might have ended up with Mark playing violin instead of the guy from the Wonder Stuff. I don't, I don't think you'd have, number one would have been looming if Mark had got his violin out. No, it's been another people visit. Him with, yeah, him with his uh, violin, yeah. And he used to go around um, to, with it, that keyboard. When did that keyboard turn up? Which one? The, the, the Snoopy. I don't know. There's some keyboard that was always there on the side of the stage, and uh, oh yes, and he'd give it a bit of a tinkle, yeah. He'd like to touch it now and then, and go yeah, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. I've got no no ear for getting the right key. In it. Well, I think I think it was deliberate. I think I think it was. I mean, I'm just by the laws of chance, you couldn't get the wrong key that often without doing it deliberately. It's a bit like Les Dawson, I suppose, wasn't it? Yeah. But that was that was when Mark went, Mark Riley. We the, we still set the keyboard up. So for like six months, it was just sat there, nobody playing it. So that was when M- Mark Smith mm. used to uh, go over and get. He could see get some god awful noises out of that. It was better than him fiddling with your amp, though, Steve, wasn't it? I suppose kept him distracted. Yeah, well, he used to go and turn you uh, turn you down, didn't he? Or up, or up, or anything. Yeah, <laughs> that's a so, weird. Thing to, that's a, gr- a great and a weird thing to do, isn't it? Mm, I hate that. <laughs> Did you, yeah, well, you would do yeah. it. If it was, yeah. yeah. But it no, is like live mixing. Live mixing, wasn't it, Steve? Live mixing. No, I don't think. <laughs> they used to, is that true that you used to put a dummy mic in the bass drum so that you could move it without we affecting did. the sound? Yeah, yeah, because he'd pull the... Yeah, we'd have one hidden under them like a pillow, so he'd pull the microphone out, but it wouldn't make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> what, was he, what was he trying to achieve? I've got a theory, but um, I don't know whether to say it. Well, you have to. This is what the whole. You got now. You can't leave it there like that. Look at me. I'm the boss. I think. I don't think there's anything else but that. No, I can yeah, do. I I, that, this is my stage, and I can do what I want. I suppose. Yeah. That's uh, that was his. Th- he, he was a. Uh, um, You'd have to get Mark on a good day. When I got him on good days. He was he was very you know when he's in he's like really most polite and um, mm. it'd be really really nice and polite. And then you knew that as soon as your back was turned. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but one thing we've talked about with all, with the books and everything, and Steve's book and Simon's and Brixie's, it's more interesting. The the, the problem is. You're going to tell the story of when it kicks off because it's it's more interesting. So I think people get a bit of an unbalanced view. I mean, they were just like that all the time, and that's not that's not the case, is it? It wasn't. You wouldn't have stuck it for however no. many years you did it. No. You have like done, done, all, done all them tours and all them records. Yeah, I am. Um, the last time I saw Mark was I was out with um, Graham Duff. Do you know him? Yes, yeah. Him on here, yeah. And he wrote a film script, I think, with uh, which I'm looking That's at. That's right, he did. He yeah. Mark, yeah. And uh, uh, I was out with Mark and Graham, and we met in Piccadilly and went off to some places, some boozes that Mark took us to. And uh, he said, uh, I don't know, it was a pub, and he said, he's, and we t- he took me to the upstairs room and said, um, this is where I always wanted to put the fall to play. And it was just the upstairs of a room in a, in a pub. And I thought, well, why? <laughs> wonder what pub was that? I wonder what pub that was then. I don't know, but it was in the, the, the King's Arms. 
It was in the middle of Manchester. It might have been. It was in the middle of Manchester. Mm. Oh, it wouldn't have been a King's Arms because that was a proper venue, wouldn't it? The King's Arms. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't it have been a, that. It was an upstairs room in a pub and it wasn't very big. Mm. But he liked the boozer and, and said, mm. this is why I always wanted the fall to play. But it, wasn't, it was hardly any size at all. Really right. small. But, um, yeah, and then we sat outside. I just got a new camera, a Fuji camera, and I said, "Can I take some pictures?" So I was take some pictures of you lads. Yeah, and I gave, and it was raining, and we sat outside in the beer garden having a fag. And uh, I said, "Here, hold this umbrella." And I took some really good pictures of Mark with this umbrella, but really fuzzy and like out of out of shape and like. Not very good at all, but I thought it kind of suits him in some way. But he was really posing. Right. Like saying, oh, no, I don't want to do it. I'm not bothered. And that, but <laughs> he, was, he was really posing hard. And that's the Falls career in a nutshell, that. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So have you done anything yeah. with him? Have you still got him or have you, have you put him anywhere? Him, yeah. I should do something with them. I think. Well, I did give um, a couple to Graham, and they put he put them in his book, which oh, is um, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it'd be interesting to see if he could ever make that into a series because it's pretty good, isn't it? I, I don't know if you've read it. The script. What the the film? Well, it's just, I think it was a TV series. I think it was eventually how they ended up. I think. Isn't it? I don't know. It's. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's quite like, strange. It'll never, you know, it's never going to go on commercial television, is it? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think they're keeping Saturday Night free for it. But no. get somewhere, get, get it on Netflix. <laughs> now there's so many op- opportunities. It's so open now. Yeah, it's, it's great that things like that might actually happen. Is your, been... You've got a film, haven't you? You, you start? Have you started it yet? No, we started in March. We wrote it ten years ago. And uh, right. and at the moment, it's looking like, well, it's going to happen. We're going to do it in March <clears throat> and we're filming it. But the, when we wrote it, I think we still thought we were a bit younger than we were when we wrote it. And now we're a lot older. It's just like a, a pensioner's road trip love story. <laughs> <laughs> you, weren't that, you weren't you weren't in the first flushes of youth if you're old, if you if you excuse me two, 10 years ago well i'm 62 now when we wrote oh, it we were 52 oh but i think we kind of thought we were about 40 right we wrote it you know with us in mind because you it's not it's, you know you never really um you don't really age when you become a pop star or a film star you kind of stick with that age yeah. and Part, unless you're Mark Smith. <laughs> you just age. Where's the road trip? <laughs> what? Where's the road trip? Well, the road trip goes from um, Stockton to the Lake District, and it is uh, the story. Oh, it's like the um, the Holy Grail, but for modern times. So the Holy Grail now is a bit of showbiz memorabilia, and it's Michael Jackson's glove. Oh, right. So that it's, the, it's the hunt for his glove, his training glove, actually. It's not even his real glove, it's his training, training glove. glove. <laughs> 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 so What's he tra- <laughs> training to be, you know, with his, you know, for his glistening, you know, his glistening glove. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's uh, it's just a gardening glove. Really. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, is it, so it's definitely it's definitely his then, or is it all in the reds? No, it's actually his training glove, and we go and um, we have to go and get it. What's he training how to wear a glove? <laughs> training to you know gives him his powers of. I don't. Why oh. did he wear one glove? I don't, I don't know. know. No one knows, but that's apparently in the you know it gave it gives him his power to do right. his to do his moonwalk. <laughs> <laughs> it's a documentary then, is it? <laughs> no, it's a proper action film. There's some, there's, there's love, terror, horror, the whole lot, it's all in there. Brilliant. Mm. So, yeah. I, I, forgive my ignorance, how long does it take to make a film? If that, It's not a silly question. Well, um, it, you, to make anything, any drama, usually you'd say um, one week for half an hour. Right. So this is, um, and it's a film, and it's one and a half hours long because I don't agree with any film being longer than 90 minutes. Right. Well, we talked about this. In the pictures, I can see it. 
because we went to the last the last film I went to see the pictures was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I and you could that. easily lose an hour from that without yeah. even breaking a sweat. So uh, if you go to the pictures, you get in there, you sit down, you have got your hot dog, you eat that, and then the film starts. Yeah, <laughs> and then. And then uh, and then if it's beyond an hour and a half, my ass can't take it. Yes. <laughs> now, like I say, that once upon a time in Hollywood, I mean that was a that was a two trip to the toilet. That I mean you you couldn't you couldn't sit there for the whole of it. Yeah, well, I, you know, it's like I'm not a big fan of James Bond films, but I, no. I, I no. can do whatever it is three hours. I, I'll I, you know I'll never see that that latest Jim James. No, Bond. me not. Me neither. Well, uh, um, whatever film you could say, but I think James Bond, you, you can't put up with that nonsense for more than an hour and a half, can you? I don't think. Well, it's a, you know, James Bond jumping up and down, and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't do it for me. I like a lot. I, I, I like, um, I went into Coronation Street because yes. I, like, that's yes. what I, like, I like that sort of thing. I like, um, you know, uh, Kitchen, Kitchen sink. sink. Yeah. My favourite film is Saturday Night and Sunday Morning. Oh, what a film. Oh, that real yeah. Burt Finn stuff, that. Mm. That's, you know, that's a film for me. Yeah. But a lad jumping around on roofs. <laughs> and bothered, I'm not interested. <laughs> so you weren't, as it turned out, when you were on current, you weren't Norris's secret love child in the end, were you? I don't think. No, I wasn't. But when I got asked to do it, <laughs> I said... Uh, I said, would you come into Coronation Street? And I said, if I was Norris's son, I'll do it. And uh, and then they, they took me, yeah, they took me by my word. And uh, I'm not his son, but they made it as near as I could. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you go back? They didn't kill well, you off, did they? <laughs> no, they didn't. I went off to Stoke-on-Trent uh, to run some more news agencies. So they, they nearly allowed me to be um, Norris's son, which yeah. you know, I thought I was and he thought I was, but it turns out I wasn't. But So you never know. I might you come never back. Know. <laughs> so what's that like then? What's that like filming, filming Coronation Street? That must be pretty full on, is it? It's fantastic. It's, it's uh, you know, you're in that, it's like being on top of the pops and you go, wow, I'm actually on top of the pops. When I was, 12, I was dreaming of this moment. Yeah. And when you stood ordering a drink in front of the cameras at the Rover's Return, you get the same kind of, in fact, more of a feeling, I think, because yeah. wow, I'm doing this. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. This is a bit, it's, a bit, um, it's a bit clinical, isn't it, the old top of the pops thing, I think. People always, people always surprised about how small it was and how sort of shabby an operation it was. It is, well, it's... Um, and like with Coronation Street, it's like you get in there, it's they've got like four scenes going on at the same time. And you get in there and they go, right, you go over there, do your scene and get out. And <laughs> make sure you know your lines, get in there, do it and clear off. Yeah. And it's like school. You're in the green room and you look on the, on the there's like a notice board and it says, your uh, scenes are on Tuesday at 5.30. So you write it down, pick up your lines, you go away, and you come back and do it. <laughs> right? It is it's not like, a lot of rehearsal then. It's it's a great way of operating. But like the um, producer said to me, when he said, it's, it's like it's a fast moving train. You've got to be right on it. Mm. All your lines. You turn up. No one's going to tell you. No one's going to you know give you back a, a rub and say, yeah, love. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not there, you're in trouble. Right. And sometimes you do a scene which um, is maybe at eight o'clock in the morning and it's for, you know, it's a 10 second scene. So it'll take you, I don't know, 10 minutes to do. So you turn up at 10 o'clock in the morning and then you're out the back door at half past eight and you think, oh, <laughs> oh well, hang on, I'll go and have a look around the war museum. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's a, what a great thing to do. Yeah, it sounds. So how long, were you, how long were you in it? Three months. Right. So did you live in Manchester then for the three months or did you what happened, commute? You know, here and there, I've, uh, I've been living in Kent for 
since 1995. So, uh, yeah, I'll go up and get the train up the night before, go and stay in the Holiday Inn, get up and do a scene that lasts five seconds. <laughs> and then think, oh, I'll go and have a look around Manchester for the rest of the day. And it's really lovely. What a great job. Yes. You know, yeah, get, yeah, definitely. Didn't, didn't you, you've got the piano, haven't you, out of the Granada? Is that right? I did, actually, yeah. I got. Uh, I, did, I didn't know you. Uh, how do you know about that? Hey, one, one does one's research, you know. <laughs> yeah, I got the piano in my. It is the piano in my house, which was at the. Um, actually, no. I tell you where it was. It was from um, the ITV rehearsal rooms in London. Right. And uh, it was the, the piano that was there from I think 1970 till 1990. Three or something, and so everyone's been on it. You know, Les Dawson, everyone, and and all oh. over it as like whiskey marks where you like people have put drinks down and it's scorched the Blimey. the veneer. Mm. Fag marks <laughs> where fags have burnt down. Different times, yeah. And now you think oh, that's there's Les Dawson's fag that's burnt down. Little <laughs> <laughs> mystery there, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's played, for, you know, Morecambe and Wise, uh, Les Dawson, Desmond, and uh, everyone. It must be worth a fortune, that piano. How did you get well, that? Absolutely nothing. But, <laughs> but it's the history, isn't it? That yeah. You, you know, yeah, yeah. Things like that. I got it from, uh, um, it was a woman called Christine Kant, who was a makeup woman who worked for years, while well, she still is working there, and uh, she said, I've got, I've got this piano, I don't want it, I'm moving, so do you want it? And uh, she gave me that. So I just got it delivered to my house. Very good. Yeah. In tune. It's really good, actually. It's a real crappy looking piano, but it didn't have to play well. <laughs> Barmy. I've yeah. heard you playing. Do, do, I saw a film you're doing. You're quite, the, you're quite the piano player, aren't you? Not, well, not, I don't know. I'm, you know, I muck about on things. I started off playing bass. Oh, you'll get nowhere playing the bass. <laughs> Thankless job, lot. Do you know what? I, I don't I, about you, uh, Steve, Paul, but Steve. But um, I, I got a guitar, and I realised that I was, um, I was playing the the bass. I was playing along with the, the top notes, along with the, with records. Just because I like the sound of it, I like the deep sound. Why did you I pick the bass then, Steve? You what? I'm just wondering, if, if, what was your motivation, Steve, for picking the bass instead of a uh, guitar or drums? Or... I couldn't afford a drum kit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's where we go rock. Right, this is where we... Diff- I um, The first thing I got was a drum kit. Um, and I could only play it in the garage on a Saturday when my mum and dad were out. They wouldn't let it in the mm. house. It wouldn't, for one thing, it wouldn't fit. The other thing it was too loud, so I could only do it in the garage on a Saturday when they were out shopping, and I, I could learn how to do drum rolls on uh, on my bed. So I, I can, I'm very good at drum rolls and nothing else. <laughs> it was a waste of time. I said, so I swapped it with who um, a, a bloke, you know, um, exchanging Mart. I suppose it was one of those things, and uh, oh, yeah. some other kid. I'd, uh, I said, I want to swap a drum kit for a guitar. So I went, my dad took my drum kit round to this kid's house. Wally, he was called. And, What's the guy at the Sex Pistols, was it? No, it wasn't. <laughs> but in, uh, he was, he was a, I have to, he's he a... He didn't even remember his name. <laughs> well, he became, like, we became really good friends. I oh, suppose we were about 14. Yeah. And uh, oh. anyway, so I said, I'm swapping this drum kit for your guitar and he had loads of guitars and he was a genius at playing any like anyone you could ask got like can you play like hendrix you've gone yeah like oh that's good how about paul kossoff yeah i can do him as well and he'd play like kossoff and they go what about eric claps anyone he'd play like him but he was uh he never really got any he was in a band called dan for a while don't know if you remember them what they call it, Dan? Dan, D-A-N. No. Anyway, he was he was brilliant. He's a, a genius. 
uh, in a lot is of it, is, is, it might, is it not a bit of a hindrance, that? Because that's the thing that we've talked about with the fall before, is the way they played is because it's the only way anybody knew how to play. Do you know what I mean? Once you can play like anybody, how do you know who to play like, if, you, if that makes yeah. sense? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you've got to find your own shape. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I think in the, he was a genius in, in the way that he could mimic anyone that's um, quite a skill, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, could, anyway, he, could, he could have got uh, a job in the band for stars in your eyes, couldn't he? <laughs> yeah. He have been good on that, eh? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, anyway, I swapped the guitar, and then I've got this um, acoustic guitar off him, swapped for a, a drum kit for an acoustic guitar. Hey, he saw you coming, didn't he? Acoustic guitar well, for a drum kit? Depends on the acoustic guitar. Well, you know what? You just go for size, though. <laughs> 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 I, I think it was a brilliant drum kit. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, it was a cheap, shitty kids' drum kit that I swapped for a very exciting Martin acoustic guitar. Yeah, all oh, right, okay, I'll take it back. <laughs> I think it was Martin. I don't know what it was. But, um, and uh, so I ended up just sort of like you know playing along to records. Like a like it was a bass, and I thought right. I'm gonna I, I might as well just start playing. Might as well play the bass. My first gig was uh, I was playing bass with Wally, who had my drum kit, and uh, another lad who called Robin, who had a guitar, and we I think we kind of started playing. It sounded like Hawkwind. It was just like do 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 <laughs> and it went on for about 25 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And it was just in Robin's front room when we were about 14 or 15. And then I looked outside of the, his front window and there was a load of girls in Bay City Rollers costume, <laughs> you know, yeah. like doing yeah. that Bay City Rollers dance. <laughs> like we were in the top. And they're going, oh, we've got luck with pop stars already. We have <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to top that, are you? That's peak career, that then. That's it. That's when you know that you've got something going. Yeah. <laughs> so did you did you play in any bands? Yeah. I, I, yeah. Uh, and the first band I was in, I was like 15 or 16, and I, we were playing in a, we used to play in this pub called the Bowes Wine Cellar in Darlington, and it was so th- slender. It was a really thin, long bar, and I was playing bass, and I had to have to lift the neck of my bass up to let people. Have <laughs> uh, yes, I've done that. I've done that. Yeah, you know, that people pass. But where you kind of like, let, I thought it's quite a good look, this, isn't it? So, a bit like um, Andy Fraser from Free. I sort of, you lift your arm up, up and down, all, right. all the way, you know, throughout your performance. <laughs> so is that like, like the Bill Wyman kind of playing it sort of almost upright kind of thing? Well, yeah, but if you can imagine Bill Wyman and Steve's bass playing in, and, and you do a, um, a, you know, sort of flicker between the two of them. <laughs> to let people pass yeah. that London Bridge. <laughs> Up and down, yeah. <laughs> so you know, that, 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 so you know that, that was uh, the highlight of your career, was it? That's, yeah. Apart, Actually, apart, was, apart from having two number ones and, you know... Yeah. <laughs> and well, was, you know, I remember those days very fondly of, um, you know, really getting excited and going out and doing uh, doing a gig on a Friday night at a pub. Yeah. Just I really, like doing, because yeah. I was in a covers band for a while. I, I used to really like that. So people, the only people were there just by accident, you know. You know... So uh, get them listening. I, uh, the covers, talking a covers band, I was... Uh, the Human League, there was Russell who was in the Human League. Do you know him? When was he in the Human League? Uh, in the early 90s. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Russell was, anyway, so I was. I did a record with the Human League um, um, and Russell was playing guitar. He was in the Weekenders as well, Electric Russell he was in, in the Weekenders. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> and uh, so... He said, I'm going off to, um, I'm leaving the Human League and I'm going to Spain to join my brother in a covers, he's got a covers band in Spain. And uh, so he went off and did that. And then years later, I met my wife and she was looking, we were looking through some old photographs and I said, look, that's Russell 
who was in the Human League, and she said, oh, yeah, we went to Spain, and he was in a covers band. Wow. And wow. his brother copped off with my sister. <laughs> well, that's small world, isn't it? Two days earlier, he was telling me that he was going there, and then you've got the evidence of him two days later being there. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's well, speaking of coincidence, the weekend is is that the one you didn't you film some of that in Withenshaw? Yeah, we did, yeah. Well that was just near our pie shop. That was just down the road. Mm. Right. Is there a big ship farm nearby? A sh- ship farm? No. <laughs> <laughs> the sewage works. I don't think so. Uh, well, you were in, at, at that pub you were outside in New All Green, which is like five oh, minutes yes. walk. Oh, yeah, that was. And that pub we renamed it. It was. Um, we named it after <laughs> a, a Yes Song. A song oh, yeah. about, from Topographic Oceans. Because we thought, what is the. I thought it was funny. We thought it was funny at the time, like, you know, um, pubs being, because I think I'd seen a pub named after some prog record. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would you, someone's a fan in there. And it was, you yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. So we called it uh, the, some name of a, um, we changed the pub to the name of a Yes song. Ah, all right. Because Phil, Phil Oakey was the barman, wasn't he? He, while he was at a meat festival, <laughs> yes, he was. But uh, no, Russell, who I was just talking about, was in that pub. Did we film right. the pub? Yes. Well, yeah. if, you'd, if you'd have wandered down the road there, you could have come and bought a pie in our shop. If I'd have known, I would have done. <laughs> <laughs> I, made, I love pies. <laughs> All right. Not to see us, just for the pies. <laughs> no, but to see Well, if I'd have known that, if you would have <laughs> known that. Yeah, but um, <laughs> what's your favourite pie? Um, ooh. Mm. I think I'd have to go for a meat and potato. If we're talking Hollands, are you talking yeah. like make your own pies and posh pies in restaurants? Are you talking about pies in pie shops? Well, I don't know. I uh, you get was yours a, how, how proper was your pie shop? Did not very get, proper at all. We used to sell Hollands pies. We used to make our own Cornish pasties. But did you have a lot of meat and veg in there? We did have meat? Yeah, you had a meat yeah. car. What, yeah. was it, did you put plenty in, or did you did you you know skimp on it? Oh, the sandwiches, the sandwich. Oh, t- oh, we didn't. Oh, you mean in the pies? Yes. Yeah. Well, we only made Cornish pasties, and uh, we didn't put a lot of our Harry used to go to this place. It's probably what the smell you could smell was this place called the Meat Market, and they used to sell. They used to sell this really sort of rammy meat, and he used to buy that and put it in the pasties. I'm surprised we didn't kill anybody. To be honest. So I, I, you know, I like a steak and kidney pie for me mm. with, with more kidney than steak. See, so you don't get it anymore, do you? You don't get kidney in pies no. anymore. I love kidney. I like. I'm an awful f- freak. <coughs> I like- I'll tell you what. The funny, funny enough, I was watching an interview with you where you said uh, you were in a restaurant in France and you bought a shit sausage. I did. Yeah. Was that how do we? Is it? Yeah, and it yeah. was. And my wife said, Nancy says, I can smell shit round here. I said, yeah. this is sausage here. Well, I was with. I went to France with work once, and they took me. They obviously set me up. They took me to this restaurant, and they said you should have the local delicacy, this andouille, and it is the worst smelling thing. I couldn't eat it. Couldn't it get is, near it. It was it's disgusting. Pig, it's pig's intestines, isn't it? It's yeah. Stank. And but it, it smells of shit. It is ah. exactly, and you are eating the shit that's like oh. to, the, to the sides of the its tubes. Yeah. I, for me, <clears throat> my. Um, me, uh, you know, when I when I eventually end up on death row, the, the, the final dinner. <laughs> <will be>, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's your final dinner? What would you like? I'll say probably liver and onions and mash. Oh, I don't like liver and onions. No. Oh, ox liver or lamb's liver? Uh, I'll go for a calf's liver. Oh, it's very very bitter. I like. It. I love it. No, no, I can't be doing my liver and onions. I might have that, and I'll say, can I have, you know, I don't want a pudding, but I'll have a steak and kidney pie <laughs> instead. Oh, you could have a steak and kidney pudding? Yeah, but I'll have, yeah, I'll have a steak and kidney pudding. I've got one in the fridge, actually. Ooh. Yeah. Hey, welcome yeah. to the Fall Podcast, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Where we dissect the fall within an inch of its It's awful. <laughs> it's <so> awful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should talk about the fall. We're running out of time, so we, we should probably try and squeeze them back into the conversation, shouldn't we? Yeah. Uh, so when was the last time you saw them live, the fall, Jim? Um, ooh, I stopped going to see bands, groups, some you know, some years ago. I think it might have been 
I, I did. I tell, well, right, I can't remember, but uh, I did remember walking around. The, I think it was the Phoenix Festival, and I bumped into Mark, uh, and he was having a kip around the, <laughs> the back of a uh, like a, a caravan thing. He was laid on a pallet having a sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and I said hello, and he woke up and he immediately went into his polite mode. And went, yep. so, oh, hello, come in here. Why didn't Welcome you? Welcome to my pallet. <laughs> yeah, he got off his pallet. He was having. A, <laughs> he got off and uh, came in and said, I "Have a cup of tea and uh, and uh, some speed." <laughs> 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 and uh, so we had a nice little chat there. I said, "Bob Dylan's on stage." Um, I've never seen him. Are you interested? And he said, no. I said, no, no, but am I? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I, I think there's a lot, kind of similar thing with the fall and the Bob Dylan in that you never know what you're going to get on the day, do you? Sometimes he'd be like mm. amazing and sometimes he's kind of... I don't not- know. I'm not, I've, 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 I know people are big fans of Bob Dylan, but he's never really done it for me. I've not paid that much attention. To be honest, they, uh, you, do good, you do a good impression of him. So many people like, they sound like him. They, they've copied him. If you when you hear him, think, oh, yeah. yeah, why would you want to copy someone like that? <laughs> 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 and and did Bob Dylan just walk in? I keep hearing people on the Six Music now, and I think, oh, you've been listening to The Fall, haven't you? And you do get people who, yeah. you know, um, can't think of any names just now, but I keep thinking, oh, yeah, but you're never going to be able to do it, really. No, they never sound like The Fall. Do they? It's like the people, like, um, Pavement, going about how they sound like The Fall, but they don't really sound anything like The Fall to me. No one's ever going to sound like The Fall because it's it's um, it's so unique. I know yeah. that's what I, you know. That's what I love about the fall is it's. I'm always on the lookout for th- something that doesn't sound like something else, and uh, it doesn't happen very often. No, I think that was I think that was the genius of Mark, really. Even even to the you know if he was adamant that they wouldn't sound like anybody else, even if they made them slightly worse sometimes. You know, is that was it was more important to be different than uh, you know competent, if you know what I mean. Sometimes. Well, like the room to live is the one I we all talk about because we always had a we had a bit of a crap time making it, but I think it was quite important in the end that he took the fall away from how they sounded before. You know, I really like room to live. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People do. People do. No, I'm always I surprised. Really, you know, um, I think it's got some. I really, really like it, and uh, it came out. It was like a ten inch, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, no, Slates was a 10-inch, wasn't it? Was it Slates? Yeah. Well, I like Slates as well. I like the, I like grotesque Slates and Room to Live, that the period I really like. Well, but I, we've never been able to listen to Room to Live with an unjaundiced ear, really, because we had such no. a horrible time making it. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, it was, you know, it wasn't the, you know, it wasn't the Burma Railroad or, you know, salt mines, but it was, it was just a bit <laughs> crap, you know. Was it, so have you, is your... Memory being tarnished by the well, yeah, it always yeah, is. Definitely, it always is. Whatever, whatever album puts you back into the mood at the time. So you always say that about all yeah. of them, though, don't you, Steve? That yeah, yeah. So does it take you back to the horror of those? <laughs> those <laughs> days? Wasn't horror. Wasn't you horror. know, I mean, you know, maybe you yeah. should have a listen to it again. You know, yeah. do a bit of yeah. self therapy and like. No, I always think it would have been a good album six months later. <laughs> Do you think what was it the production that you don't like? No, it's just under. We didn't know them. We didn't know the under, songs. Under rehearsed and under. Yeah. Well, <laughs> under you know, sometimes that, that's not a bad thing. You know, it's like you were saying that when things are, you know, if you start doing things on purposely out of tune and uh, it's going to sound wrong. If yeah. it sounds mm. amateur, that's right. That's, yes. a, that's yeah. a good thing. I and think. that's the that's the thing about the, the fall that they managed that, and it is that you know they managed to do that or Mark managed to do that for so long. It's quite because bands don't get that sort of level of. I don't, it must take a it must have took a lot of will to still be able to do that after like forty years. Incredible, really. It's quite a fine line. You have to, yeah. um, you know, to 
otherwise people just wouldn't like it. So I'm not having this. Yeah. Uh, like when you, you know, um, it is a fine line. It's especially fine when you come when it comes to the fall because if you listen to someone like Karl Heinz Stockhausen, yeah, uh, you go, uh, I see where he's going to, and it's it's a bit forced. Yeah. With the fall, it went. It fell in that camp that was so beautifully between naivety and and yeah. forced. Um, Professionality. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah, there, was, there was a lot of naivety too. It's, if I can refer to it in terms of painting, it's yeah. um, you can uh, you can have something that's forced naivety, and you can have stuff that is really naive, and there's some way in the middle where it's yeah. like right on the on the border. Yeah. You know, like oh, you know, just like, and then that's where you get true beauty. Yeah. So I, that, I, it must be very difficult. How do you avoid? You know, how, do you not just you don't get better to the point where you can't do naive after a while because you've been doing it so long? It must be difficult to sustain as well, mustn't it? What painting? Yeah. Mm. Well, I, I drift between betwixt the two. I yeah. go. I go. Um, Naive, and I go um, the, the, the right opposite. Yeah, sophisticated. Uh, yes, that's the word. Highly sophisticated. Yeah. <laughs> so we should talk about. If we're talking about your paintings, we should talk about carrier bag man, shouldn't we? Yeah. No, oh, that painting. Yeah. yeah well, I did great. carrier bag man. I did. First of all, when I did uh, that painting, it was uh, I'd just done a kind of a. I, I did a various photocopies. I photoshopped a Greek Roman statue and then changed the shape of his legs and really battered it out of shape and did a really nice out of shape Roman statue. And I thought, I'm not happy with it. And I was listening to carry bag man. And I thought, I'm just going to put a carrier bag in his hand. <laughs> and then I wrote, messed about with it more and more over about six months and then wrote all the lyrics all over it. Wow. And I yeah. really like it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Right. That's in the gallery. In- yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a great, pic- got a great picture of you, Mark, and uh, Steve yeah, yeah. in front of I it. I really it's- like that painting. I actually, it's one of the few paintings that actually means something to me. So I might actually, if it doesn't sell, I'll have it back and I'm going to... <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean enough to you, so not sell it. <laughs> well, you know, the, I'm saying that, it might have already sold, I don't know. Oh, okay. yeah, all right. <laughs> but if it doesn't, if it hadn't sold, I mean, I can't do anything about it then. No. <laughs> right, no give us the money back. <laughs> so, well, I'll tell you what I, I was going to say. You, you said, you, in, I've read an interview where you described, if you had to describe Manchester as a bird, you'd go with a crow. Is that right? Yeah, it's got that. Um, but uh, Crows are really like intelligent, friendly birds, but they're black and mysterious. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I have a bit of a problem with that because when I was on the chase, the <laughs> question that knocked me out was what kind of creature is a COVID? Yeah, and that's a crow, isn't it? Yes, it so is. I've, 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 I've held them in high dudgeon ever since. What did you say? I said I thought it was an insect of COVID. <laughs> but as everybody knows, apparently everybody in the world knows that know COVID is a, a type of bird. I know you do now. I do now. I'm not forgetting that. <laughs> no, we will stick with that. I like COVIDs. They're I a, do. I like crows. I really like them. Mag- is a magpie a COVID? Yes. Right, I like a magpie. You name all the COVID, the British COVIDs. Okay. Magpie, <laughs> blackbird. No, blackbird's no. not a COVID. Okay, no. you got a, a, a crow, rook, uh, hooded mm. crow, jay, um, chuff, a chuff, chuff. Yeah, that's a, it's got a red beak and red legs, and you find them in Cornwall. Okay, right. Yeah, so you, you're particularly. Drawn to painting birds, aren't you? Yeah, I do. I do like painting birds. Yeah, because I I, I I just like it. You know, um, I, I've got to a, a stage in my life where I kind of just do what I like. Mm-hmm. You know, 
I've never, well, actually, I've always been like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm relaxing more. I just, you know, I like, I don't like going out and doing telly shows and I don't really like going out my house much, really. Uh, so the thing I do, which is what I like, is put a stay at home and paint birds. Right. You know, have you seen any? Have you seen Edwin, Edwin Collins? He's he's a great artist at birds as well. Yeah, he, yes, he's very good. Not as good at COVID as you, but you know, you can't have everything, can you? Well, oh, I don't. I don't just do COVID. <laughs> <laughs> That's the title of the next album. <laughs> <laughs> After Jim does Lent, then it's I don't just do COVID. <laughs> no, yeah. Anyway, lads, I'm going to have to go because I'm. Yeah. Yes. No, no. Up. Uh, thanks so much for that, Jim. That was great. Yes, thanks, I really Mark. enjoyed that. Great yeah. to speak to you. Before we go, can I do an advert for your pies? Go on then. Yeah. Uh, well, give us the give us the lines, and I'll do it. <laughs> Hamlish pies unavailable <laughs> since 1992. Hamley, are you ready? Hamley's pie. Hamley's pies available since 1992. You won't get a better steak and kidney pie than a Hamley steak and kidney pie. Hey, would have been millionaires. Would have been millionaires oh, with that. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll let you go. Right. right, all right, thanks. All right, thanks, 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 thanks very much. See you. See you, Bye. mate. Bye. 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 Thanks for joining us this week on Old Brother. Please follow us on Twitter at Old Brother Show, where you can subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or RSS, so you'll never have to mix an episode. While you're at it, give us a rating on iTunes. Or if that's too much like hard work, at least tell your mates about us. You might also want to check out our personal Twitter accounts at HanleyPA and at StephenHanley6 with a PH. Our books, The Big Midweek and Leave the Capital, are also available from Root Publishers or all good bookstores. Hope to see you all again soon and remember if you're driving, take your car. Ta-da!